Hi, I'm Adam Handling and welcome to my Chelsea restaurant where I'm teaming up with Banquist to make three wonderful little dishes. But let me just talk to you about them because they're all very different. Lobster pasta is from my Covent Garden restaurant where it's just super tasty, bags of flavor and just what everyone wants to eat really. Pork kimchi and cauliflower, an original dish in my very first restaurant in East London and an apple tartatan which just pretty much screams out everything I love. Salted caramel, roasted apples, fresh custard, delicious. And inside your hamper you find double zero flour, some lobster, tomatoes, coriander and lobster sauce. The main course, Iberico pork, presser from the shoulder, kimchi emulsion, cream, cauliflower, taragashi and one of my favourite desserts, tartatan, apples, caramel, custard and the tart base. Here at Banquist, we provide pretty much everything but a few kitchen things that you always have in your cupboards anyway, which is oil, butter and eggs, salt and pepper obviously as well. So equipment wise, super easy, two pots and a bowl to make the entire starter dish, pasta boiler or just a large pot with a sieve to take the pasta out, a pot to cook the puree, to pass the puree, to roast the pork and to cook the tartatan, a blender obviously to make it smooth but I would suggest a Nutribullet will be far better to use because it's more smaller volume. Making pasta is one of the simplest things to do, but you've got to make sure you do it an hour before, so make, it, make sure it's your first job. So inside here, you've got your egg yolks, oil, flour. I'm just going to add one tablespoon of water to the oil, and then we're going to, that just removes all the oil from it, and we're going to add it to the eggs mix up the eggs and everything so when it fits in the well and then your flour in a larger bowl or even on your table just make sure it's nice and clean make a well with your fingers then pour all the egg mixture in the center salt no pepper. Then with your fork or your finger, go around, spin the bowl, shake it, and that incorporates everything. You want to take your time with this and not rush it, or you'll just get not very nice pasta. And then when the flour moves the yolks away, finger, and then use the best tools you have, your hands. Just the tips of your fingers, you wanna just squeeze it together. Like you're making a, like you're making pastry. You just wanna combine it all. until it forms a dough. All this leftover part in the bowl, we're gonna keep it for when we roll the pasta, we're gonna dust it, we don't waste anything. So this is it, but it looks terrible at the moment. So this is where you got to knead it. So sprinkle this on the table and really knead it. Doing this, you're stretching out the gluten in the flour you got to do this for about 10 minutes. So you can see that the pasta is slightly more smoother, but it's still cracking. This is because you've basically just beat it up. It's been literally punched lots of times, like your arm if you would be tightened up, that it needs to relax. And when it relaxes, it really becomes far easier to work with. Wrap it in cling film, let it rest an hour, and you'll see that it'll be far more softer. And then knead it again, and then we can roll it out. So the pasta is in the fridge and now we're making the cauliflower puree because these do take the longest to make. So cauliflower, one of my favorite ingredients. Trim off the leaves. Don't waste the leaves. We're not gonna use the leaves in this recipe but they're really good for other things to do. Fry them, crisp them, chop them up, make them into a salad, that sort of stuff. They're delicious. So the cauliflower, Spin it around.
the roots I'm going to keep as well. So take the nicest florets you have and we're going to use that for the garnish. Then the rest we're going to chop it up. So the little leaves in a pan. The root, don't waste it, slice it. The cauliflower, slice it. So the reason why I've sliced the cauliflower is fundamentally so I can really caramelize it down. Imagine if you're caramelizing onions. You want to slice them really, really thin and get as much surface contact to the foaming butter. And doing that, you get such a nutty flavor and it actually cooks far quicker. So in a pot, add your butter and start to form this by putting it on a heat. Butter on the heat and you want to make sure it's all melted and it's all cropping. So like shake the pan, you get all the air into it and you see the bubbles. It also stops it burning. Now that it's melted and it's all foamy and I'm shaking it, it's nicely golden. It's not got little black spots in it, which is the caramelized milk protein. It's just the fat. Now we're going to add the cauliflower. Using your spoon and now you want to caramelize it. You want to see it until it goes, some, some bits go a little bit burnt, but burnt in a nice way, not burnt in a nitrous way. You want to cook this out for about 10-15 minutes. Cauliflower puree is on, pasta is in the fridge. Now we're going to just assemble the tartataki so that when we're making our meal, we don't need to worry about stopping making, we can just enjoy. So this little container is filled with caramel, which is what we're going to really caramelize the apples with. One thing about my food and one thing that I really want to do is if it's not recyclable, we'll reuse it. So having something like this, you can keep it, make yourself some little cakes, make your tartar tan again. Apples. Most people find it weird how the apples, they're not in lemon water or anything like that. I don't want that. An apple tartar tan, the most, the biggest mistake people make is that the apples are wet. When you're making caramelized apple or caramelized pineapple or anything like that, you want it as dry as anything so that it just soaks up the caramel. So these have been air drying for 24 hours out like this with a cloth on it and in the fridge so they air dry so they're very dry and these are pink lady apples, the best apples to use. So get your little container on a tray just in case it doesn't, just in case it leaks, it doesn't wreck your entire oven. The apples, we want them to stand up really nice and tall so that when they cook, they can come down. First cup is hard, You're just gonna have to hold them all and really fill it up. And you wanna squeeze them so much that you think it's gonna break the tin. And really push them down. So if you have, look, think about it, this is 10 pieces of apples, these are cut in thirds, so it's like three and a bit apples. Can we say this is uh, 20 or 5 a day? And the pastry. Everything is better with pastry. So it's all cut out as well for you. Clean it over. And you want to just make sure you tuck it inside. It's not a pie where you're covering the tin. You're going to want to take this out. So wrap it, push it all inside as much as you can. And get it in the little nooks and crannies. The main thing this is going to do is when it bakes, you're going to make a pastry cup. So all the caramel that you're going to then pour in when it's cooked, stays in it. So when you cut into it, it just oozes out of just sheer beautifulness. Stab this with a fork or a knife. 
The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want the pastry to puff up. It's not a milfoy. I just want this the beautiful buttery pastry. Then get an egg yolk and brush it over the top so that it gets really delicious. If you don't have a pastry brush, just get a bit, piece of kitchen cloth, roll it, and just use that as a brush. So this looks proper caramelized, but as the caramelized onions, this is the flavor. It's not burnt, it's caramelized, the natural sugars. So now that it's hot, we're gonna add in our liquid. And it's gonna reduce, and this is how you make a puree, but a beautiful puree at that. Now we're gonna season with pepper and salt now, not at the beginning when it comes to the salt, because you don't wanna draw the moisture out. Don't be shy with your peppers. This is a meat dish, so you want to have it everything really punchy and tasty. So we're going to add this to a blender. Like I said, we're only making a small amount, so if you have a Nutribullet or a small blender, that's even better. This is a professional kitchen, so I've only got large equipment because we make them in large batches. But it will still work. And if you don't have a blender at home, just roast, keep, keep roasting it and roasting it and roasting it, and it will go like a coarse puree, like crushed potatoes, but crushed cauliflower, equally as delicious, still tasty. The only thing you're not doing is making it smooth, but it's still gonna have the flavor. So it's blended and it's all caramelized. Scrape off everything, because like I said, we don't like wasting. Pour it all into a sieve. So with this, best little secret is to get a little ladle and really squeeze it through it. So the ladle pushes it through and it comes out the other side nice and smooth. Pass it out the fridge, flour. So only a little bit of flour on the bench, because the rest you want it to stick it slightly so that the pasta can hold and stretch. And do it from the middle and then work out. A little secret when this is getting too hard to do, because my hands are getting red, pass the machine even better. Get a damp piece of kitchen cloth and just dab it on it. That little bit of water will help it roll even better and also stick to the bench very slightly. So the pasta is done. It's a little bit ragged around the edges because my rolling pin is smaller than what the pasta is. Bigger rolling pin the better, but if you have a small one, don't worry. Now that it's rolled, we're gonna just put a little bit of flour on there, rub it in, because we're gonna roll the pasta now. So just nice and simple, don't press it down. Like that. Flour again. Flour the bench. Knife. Cut off the end bit so that it's all nice and neat. And then slice your pasta. Don't be shy with it. Now you've got yourself little linguines. You can do it as thicker as well, you can do it as tagliatelle. Then sprinkle with a little touch more flour and then shake it off. And then just let it sit on your workbench or on a tray for about five minutes just to dry out. So the boiling water I have on and I got two pans. You don't need to use two pans, you can use one, but I like the, the two portions to be exactly the same. Because I know if I'm cooking for a friend and I have more than him, he'll just complain. So super easy, get the sauce, split it into two.
the butter into two. Super easy. Now I just want to reduce this down by half and then we'll start to do it. So the sauce is super simple to do but it's very much zero waste. So if you're going to buy a lobster use the whole thing and these ones is using the shells. So we dry the shells out so that you really impact that flavor and then we make uh, a lobster sauce you know onion star anise um, white wine roast it all down add that top it up with uh, fish sauce fish stock and cook it slowly really slowly and then blend the bones through the sauce to make so much flavor then pass it so essence of lobster so while that's reducing which it won't take very long at all because you're boiling it you want to get your tomatoes and just cut them cut them into halves cut them into quarters however you really want smaller ones I'm going to cut in half bigger ones I'll probably cut in sixes now that the sauce is reduced I'm going to do the pasta which I let dry out inside of my water and I'm going to cook it for exactly one minute so that I've turned the heat off this is where I'm going to add the lobster and this is one of the main reasons why I split it in two pans. One person gets all the lobster, the other one doesn't. So these are using all the parts of the lobster, the body, the tail, the knuckles, everything. And you do not want to, and this is one of the main ones, you don't want to turn the temperature on on the lobster. The lobster is already cooked, you're not re-cooking it, you're warming it. So do it super slow, or you got yourself little bullets and you've ruined it. One minute's up. All dry, get it into a bowl. It'll be easier to do what I'm gonna do next. Now, you're thinking one minute for pasta. It's not cooked, 100%, it's not cooked. Split half of it again. Exactly half. Into the sauce. Add your tomatoes, half your tomatoes in each. Season with pepper. And a little bit of salt, because the sauce is reduced, so you've just maximized the flavor. And stir it. The sauce is warm. The container is, the pot is warm. It does not need to boil. The pasta is warm. The one mistake I think people make quite commonly, whether or not it's fresh pasta or dried pasta, is they have this, their beautiful sauce, they cook the pasta, they put it straight into the sauce, and then they serve straight away. Right there, the pasta hasn't had time to relax, hasn't had time to soak up that wonderful sauce that you've just spent all day making. So let it rest inside here, one or two minutes, just to soak up all that lovely lobster sauce so that it's just super, super, super tasty. This isn't a soup, it's a pasta dish. Pasta's been sitting there two minutes. Now I'm just gonna add my herbs. And mix it slowly so you don't break the pasta up. Main reason why I added the herbs at the end, if anyone wants to hazard a guess, I want the aromats, I want the oils, I want the freshness of flavor. I don't want stewed herb flavor. So never put your herbs in at the beginning. Put them in at the end. Right, now, it's a pasta dish. Let's try and make it look pretty. Get yourself some tongs, doesn't need to be these. It's actually better to use a butcher's fork where you can just put it in and just turn it. Turn it, turn it, turn it. Make it really tight, like a little parcel. And then spoon your garnish over the top.
just let me clean the plate. So there you have it. Not the prettiest dish in the world, but it's damn well tasty. My lobster pasta. So the wine that I'm pairing with this is a stunning little white wine from the southwest of France. It's a sec, so therefore it's a little touch more sweeter, which works really well with spice, works well with the tartan, and the sweetness of the lobster. Nice, slightly underripe pineapple flavors, some mango, everything you need. Nice, simple, delicious, crisp, white, tasty wine. So for the main course, I've prepared three different things. One of them is my pork sauce. The amount of effort and days it takes to make this, it's virtually impossible to make a sauce like this at home. So it's best I do it so you can really have a great meal. Kimchi emulsion. So you know how I said keep the, uh, keep the cauliflower stalks? We do that and we ferment it into kimchi. So this is the whole circle of life of that beautiful cauliflower and we make it into an emulsion. And, which is one of the secret ingredients I put in a lot of my food. Taragashi a spice from Japan it's chilly it's delicious it's spicy so if you like hot food put it on treat it like seasoning like you would salt on this dish it's very tasty and it's in a lot of my food so now I'm gonna cook the pork and the cauliflower now pan on really really hot heat when you want to caramelize meat it needs to be hot a little bit of oil and season up your pork and your cauliflower I'd never encourage to have raw meat and vegetables on the same tray, but it's going in the same pan, so it's perfectly fine. So, meat first. And don't play with it. Let it sit down, then turn it over. So the great thing about Iberical pork is it's like the wagyu of pigs they're fed on acorns they're absolutely stunning the flavor is lovely and you can eat it quite pink so it's really really juicy so the main tip i would say with cooking pork or cooking any meat or fish leave it out the fridge for about 30 to 40 minutes to come up to room temperature so that when it's so cold and hits the pan it doesn't dry out the outside. It cooks perfectly well all the way through. Caramelization on the pork, that is what you want. Now we're gonna add the cauliflower. And we're gonna roast the cauliflower too. And the reason it's in the same pan is for two reasons. One, at home, less washing up. But the main one, you keep all the flavors together. When you're roasting the pork, you've got the little bits of crispy pork on the, um, on the pan, the cauliflower will mop it up, and vice versa. So I'm always turning and turning with spoons rather than tongs. But I do that because I can handle the heat in the kitchen. If you can't and you've got some sensitive fingers, just use tongs and turn them. Don't try and be a superstar. But for me, I like to feel the temperature, I like to feel the meat, I like to turn it. So I use a spoon and my fingers. So now that everything's starting to caramelize, I got some thyme and some garlic. Just get the garlic, put it on your workbench and hit it. You want to crack it open. So it gets all that garlic flavor out and it's great. We're going to now add some butter. I'm a chef at the end of the day, so I do like my butter. And this is where it starts to form. Now that we have liquid in the pan, we're gonna add the garlic first, and that'll all come out, and then now I've just made garlic butter. It smells delicious, it tastes delicious, and it's super simple. So, coat all the butter on everything, all the garlic, This is how this will get it even more caramelized. Now I'm going to add the thyme. 
watch it it'll spit it might spit at you so again be careful and put it inside of the fat when you put it inside the fat all the oils come out and the butter now tastes like thyme the amount of videos I've seen where people just put a sprig of thyme on the top what benefit is that going to do no flavor but just burn the thyme it's completely stupid this makes the liquid so the butter in the pan tastes like that now this goes straight in the oven for about six minutes so now I've taken the pork out of the oven it is going to be pink but trust me you can eat it this way it's delicious but it's going to also take like 10-15 minutes to rest so leave it turn it the other way around that it was inside the oven so upside down and then let it rest in the pan for 10-15 minutes and trust me it will make it really succulent and delicious while we're doing this we're going to heat up the cauliflower puree we made and the sauce that I made for you So we're just about to sit down and eat the main course. So let's just egg wash this, get it in the oven while we eat, so that it's ready when we finish. I'm only wanting the yolk, not the white. And then I don't have a pastry brush here. I left it in my other restaurant. So blue cloth, perfect, dab it. So let's get this in the oven for 25-30 minutes. So the pork's been resting and I just put it back in the oven for one minute when I put my plates in the oven so that they stay hot as well just to bring the temperature back up. So I'm going to slice it, moment of truth for me as well. delicious so you see it's got a little touch of pinkness to it but it's just super tasty so cut it in slices and don't bother about cutting the ends off of it so it looks all pretty turn it around the outside has been roasted and we don't waste anything again so I've got a little tray with a blue cloth on it but this is a professional kitchen so my kitchen roll is blue put it on there just to soak up the extra juices the cauliflower to soak up the butter now it means we can plate up lovely so I've got my cauliflower puree in a piping bag but that's just so it's easier for me to do during service keep it in the pot it's totally fine and we're just gonna do three dots I do three dots because I want the last mouthful to be the same as the first then this kimchi emulsion in threes two a lot of stuff's going to be hidden so if you make little marks on the plate don't worry at all now we're going for the cauliflower two pieces one upside down one nut now the pork two pieces on one side one piece on another but everything is facing inside of the plate we're going to sauce the meat and go around and if you have a look I hold my spoon like I hold a paintbrush or a pencil because you can really control where your sauce is going and food is natural so just make it look as simple as possible now my favorite thing the taragashi go on the plate make it make a mess and then mustard frills
And here you have it, one of my favorite things to eat, pork, cauliflower and kimchi. So we've just enjoyed the main course. The tartar tan's out the oven. I've let it rest a couple of minutes. And as you can see, a little bit of caramels came out of it. So make sure you definitely put it on a tray just so it doesn't mess up your oven. Custard, fresh custard at that. Open it up, get it in a jug. Now this tartar tan. So I'm gonna put my hand underneath it. Use a cloth, just in case a little bit of caramel comes out. I don't want you to burn yourself. So use a cloth, you don't mind getting dirty. Open it up. And then just hold the bottom or push the bottom up. Yep. Yeah. Plate on top, switch it over. Looks sexy as hell, but let's just cover it in more salted caramel. And this is why the pastry looking like a cup is even better. Cover it in it. And here you have my apple tartar tan, fresh vanilla custard. Cut it in half, dive in, enjoy.